Yeah, Namibia is known as a, a culture of Khan, mm. uh, simple because we are having hunters. Those are making living because of uh, hunting. And we have security companies, those are protecting our properties, so they need the guns. Mm. So sport persons and uh, those who are also protecting their animals and so on. So in that case, you need them to be licensed. So there is a, a need for issuing of licenses. As the head of the Firearms Control Division, in your opinion, has the Namibian police managed to effectively execute gun control in our country? Oh yes, the, we, we did. Uh, Namibia has been uh, with the registration since uh, before independence. And in 1996, the new act, the current act, we, it came to, I mean, it was made and it came to operation in 1998. Mm -hmm. So as such, you, you heard here and there that there are a number of people being arrested with the firearms, illegal firearms and so on. So that is a sign that we are in charge and we are in control of the firearms. Um, Deputy Commissioner, since independence, NAMPO has been uh, in existence for that long. It's been 25 years. Why only go back to the act now and, and, and try to, to sort of control these firearms uh, by members of the public in the country, why, w w the ownership out thereof? Why only now? Uh, as I indicated earlier that the Namib the Namibian Act uh, of Arms and Ammunition Act came to in operation in 1998. Okay. We are members of the SADC as well. Mm. And the, we have what we call the SADC protocol on firearms, uh, light weapons and uh, related materials. So this act came, or the, the protocol came into operation in 2000. So there are a number of provisions which the Namibia as a member of the SADC, we have to align our mm. act with the SADC protocol. One of that is uh, the competence testing or competence uh, certificate. Mm -hmm. So that's why there is a need for us to align with the SADC protocol. It's not necessarily that we, we take too long and so on after independence, but uh, we have act already which was amended in 1996. It's just that it cannot solve the problem now and it cannot be in line with the, it's not in line with the SADC protocol. That's why there is a need for us to, 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 to amend it now. When can we expect the implementation of this act, as well as when will it take effect? And what will it entail, actually? The uh, when, that will be depend on the parliament, okay. once they uh, pronounce themselves. Mm -hmm. But uh, what will be there, uh, among others, as I indicated, is a competence testing. Mm -hmm. That is now maybe to add what the Inspector General of the Namibian Policy already has said is the, <clears throat> the issue of uh, uh, check, uh, background check. Here we will be mandated to interview also the, the relatives, whether it's the, now the partners or whether the, the, the traditional leaders and so on. So currently that we are just doing it upon the information that maybe the, uh, a certain person is not fit to possess a firearm because he's violent in the community and so on. Uh, to add to that one, then we have the duration of the license. Uh, currently, our, our act did not make a provision as to when the license should be expired unless you seize that firearms uh, by either sell it or you are uh, a deceased and so on. But with this uh, new amendment now, it will make us now that after five years, then automatically you have to renew your license again. And that will be applied as well to the competence testing. Okay. So maybe to add it to that one again, is the, we have a problem when it comes to the assault rifles. Mm -hmm. Assault rifles here, we are referring to the firearms like uh, AK and R5. So this is uh, one of the challenges as well which we have in Namibia and uh, it's part of the amendment uh, which will be in the act. So we are looking into that one and upon the, the parliament has made it uh, ended to that so then automatically we will be able to Okay. Uh, Deputy Commissioner, so currently no background checks are done uh, into those who are applying for firearms or gun licenses? Uh, currently, as I said, that we, we do, but it's not really mandated on the provision, and we are doing this uh, upon the information received. For instance, when we receive uh, information that the, the, a certain person has been applied for the firearms, but mm -hmm. according to the community is not happy or according to the partner is not happy mm -hmm. that such person has applied. 
So we will go further to investigate, and our intelligence can come and tell us that no, that is uh, it's not very fit. Right. However, we th we want now to have more on the pro to to mandate it in the provision, so that we as a law enforcers we are in mandated in the provision uh, according to the provision of the act, so that we we did that one freely. Okay. Um, allegations are that police officers in the country only check the applicant's fingerprints currently and physical, uh, physically observe their appearance, uh, plus routine questions, <clears throat> pardon me, on a form before issuing the gun license. Is this true? Uh, yes, it, it may be some of the truth, but as I indicated earlier that we also go beyond that in the case we have information. Mm -hmm. But yes, in the current uh, most of the requirements, we make sure that you, you don't have a criminal record. That's mm. why we are checking the fingerprints. Uh, we are also checking on the, the, the issue of whether you, you, you don't have more firearms because we have a limit of four, four firearms and so on. Mm. But uh, yes, uh, th th those are some of the challenges we find, and that is uh, some of the loopholes which we find in the mm. act. That's why we are uh, indicating that we should have the amendment.